When I was in middle school, a teacher said something that forever changed how I view the world. The year was 1996, and my favorite song on the radio at the time was Millions of Peaches, Peaches for Free. Now, Ms. Ambrose said, I don't want to hear you guys singing that song in my class because that song is objectifying towards women. Now, I'm in seventh grade, like, go on. <laughs> well, Miss Ambrose did not elaborate, which, which is why I knew there was something there. Right? <laughs> and my life kind of changed forever that day because I didn't know some things could also be other things. <laughs> right? I... I consider myself to this day to be a feminist ally. I think it's important to smash the patriarchy. But I will admit that seventh grade me was beyond thrilled to learn that millions of peaches, peaches for free, was about, frankly, anything other than a really good produce sale. You know? It's like, this song's, it's like, this song's dumb, it's catchy, but it'd be better if it was more interesting. Um, and, and a lifetime of signal hunting began. Now, here's the thing you gotta realize about looking for hidden meanings and things. It can be a lot of fun, but you gotta be cautious around marijuana. <laughs> because there's something like an acceptable window of dignity between like clueless simpleton and superstitious lunatic, right? And wherever you start in that framework, marijuana will push you either into the middle or at the top, right? And that's why, to me, medical marijuana was always a really silly uh, prescription drug to take seriously, because it's the only drug that, for some people, will relieve your glaucoma, but for other people, it'll make millions of peaches sound like it's the, about the Kennedy assassination, <laughs> you know? Not everything is a metaphor for American politics, and I don't care if the band is called Presidents of the United States. <laughs> the, other, the other reason that I thought medical marijuana was kind of hard to take seriously is because um, the different strains of weed are so different from each other that they might as well be different drugs, right? Like, take for example how some people talk about alcohol, different types of alcohol. You might have heard something like, Oh, well, red wine gives me a sleepy drunk, but uh, whiskey gives me an angry drunk, right? Or, or tequila makes me horny, but craft beer brings out my inner entrepreneur. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, you get the point, right? You've heard stuff like this, like, uh, oh, bourbon, bourbon brings out my southern accent, but vodka makes me fearless on Craigslist, right? <laughs> I could keep going, but you get the point. It's like, well, absinthe makes... <laughs> absinthe makes me sensitive to Penrose steps. <laughs> but Sambuca makes my mom xenophobic at Chili's. Yeah. You get the point. Well, the strains of marijuana are way more different than that. The, the strains of marijuana are like, well, this one will make Spongebob funnier, but, but this one feels like you're tripping at Burning Man. But it's the same drug, it's just THC, right? But it's, it's the same drug, but it's just that this strain will, you know, boost your appetite, but this strain will make you terrified of mirrors. You, you know, like medicine. Or it's like, well, this strain will help you plow through your Netflix queue, but this strain will collapse the very passage of time. <laughs> Who's your insurance provider? 